So today we are going to be using some of these beautiful things. This is some of the cheapest ways to make cards and they're absolutely gorgeous. So let's get started. Today we will create the backgrounds and in part two we will see the full cards. Thanks for joining me today. I'm Jen Lee and you're with me on my Gentastic journey. So I'm just using this blue paper to show you some of the stencils that I have. To give you some options, this stencil would look good if you used it as a true stencil where you ink that pattern out on a background that may already be design paper or a dark paper like this. This next stencil is really big so you could actually use two stencils with it or you could create a background first and then highlight that in white or in black. This one has a lot of intricate detail so you can either stencil it and then use maybe some distress oxide and spray some water on it and create some blur and some different backgrounds and we're going to use this one for sure. And then this one's nice because it has very little outlines and intricate amounts so you can put a nice background and then use that with a darker or lighter. This one you kind of have to pick and choose where you want to put those so it would be on a background already. And this gigantic one is gorgeous and you would want to use a dauber. We're going to ink this one up and use a couple of stencils for this one. So just wanted to kind of run through and show you some of the stencils and what you could do with each one. Now these are some stencils that are layering stencils. So you can use that bottom one either dark or light and use the top one the opposite. And we'll play with this one today and then this one as well. You would want to do one and usually a lighter or darker or you could already have a background and just make them white. You'll see what we do with this one in a little bit. Okay so we're going to start with this real intricate mosaic and I'm going to use my post-it. It's called labeling tape. It's just a low tack tape and I use this sometimes to tack down my stencils onto my paper I'm trying to get this kind of all even on each side. It's important to make sure your stencil doesn't move. And you'll see later I switch out this harder plastic pad for a silicone pad. We're going to use some Distress Oxides. We've got three of them. Picked Raspberry. This is Salty Ocean. And I'm just going to try and get some color down. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I'm going to try and have kind of a little bit of a pattern throughout. And I am going to speed this way up so that you <laughs> don't have to watch me try and figure this out. But I go pretty fast and I'm just, you know, I'm not really going every other, but I'm kind of going every other because at the end of the day, it's going to not matter. I just pulled out a smaller dauber that would work as well. I'm just using these because I have one of each of these for my Distress Oxides. It doesn't have to be perfect. There can be some ink that gets blended in with the other colors. Next we'll move on. Beautiful color as well and again I'm just trying to fill in some of the spaces. This is I think picked raspberry or something along those lines. I'll put all the names of the inks at the in the description box below and also all of the products that I use that I can find. Some of these I've had for a number of years so if I can't find it I won't or I'll put something similar and I'll put similar in the description box so you know it's not exactly the same. And if for some reason you think I missed something leave me a comment and I will look for that. So I start with this lighter pink color and change my mind and go with this candied apple just because the pink was just too close to the other one. This kind of has a lot more differential between the, the two colors and it still looks really cute. And I sped this up and cut a little bit out just, just because it was. this is going to be a long video to begin with and I had to make it two parts. So then I go back in and just fill in a few where I didn't have enough blue in here I didn't think. That's what it looks like and now we'll have the big reveal. I think it came out real pretty and I'm putting aside the stencil itself because we're going to use that as well. I'm going to let that one dry and I'm going to bring in a new piece of paper and then we'll just use my post-it tape so that I have a little bit of a border and that'll either be a border if I use it directly onto cardstock without cutting it down. In most cases I do have to cut this down a little bit so that there is a border if you use a card base but in either case this helps me keep it tacked down to my surface and if I do intend to just use it on its own I'll have a little bit of a border. 
And then I'll bring in my daubers again, and I'm trying to do this real light without re-inking them, but you'll see that doesn't work for very long. I'm not using watercolor paper. That would have been helpful. This is Nina cardstock, and you can see then the red here came in on a little bit darker. But again, I'm just trying to get a little bit of ink on here, a little bit of color, because we're gonna spray this and use the leftover ink from the stencil that we just used. Sometimes it's just fun to see what it's gonna look like. Why not? <laughs> it's fun to play with stencils. I love stencils, I use them a lot. I'm not a great ink blender, but I can stencil away. I do make a lot of errors and I've got several videos out with all my errors because I tend to work kind of fast and sometimes you know I just don't want to be super perfectionistic in my card crafting because I'm a little bit like that in my normal life and so it's fun to kind of be a little bit messy, a little bit less worried about everything but sometimes it causes mistakes. Here you see I'm just kind of like I'm not sure this is going to work out anyway but I kind of wanted to put some so some color back there so I sprayed that and then with water and I'm going to set it down because this is distress oxides they're water reactive and I'm going to set it there just for a minute and then I'm just taking a rag these are my rags for my card crafting just in case any water seeps out and then this is what it looks like so it's not awful it's not great We'll set it aside, let it dry, and see what we want to do with it later on. I do reuse those post-it labeling tape, so you'll see that come out. But So two out of one, not, not, not too bad. So I'm going to use three more Distress Oxide, and I show you the colors because I'll never remember them. <laughs> and again, I'm going to tape down everything, and when I tap my fingers, it's when I'm thinking. And so in this one, I'm going to also want to create a little bit of a background. I'm going to be using a stencil that has squares and rectangles, so I'm going to want to do something opposite. So I'm just putting some ink down everywhere in circular motions. Some of them look a little bit like amoebas or something along those lines, just to get a little bit of ink down and cover a lot of the background. I didn't want it to be terribly dark. And again, I'm playing. I don't plan out my cards in advance. I like to do this online because this is my card crafting time. I think important to know is the process, like the thinking through, the changing of my mind, the changing of your mind when you when you do card crafting. All of this is helpful. It's helpful to see what people could have done, what people end up doing. And so I really uh, don't plan in advance. I'll plan that I want to use stencils, uh, but that's about the extent of it, or how many cards I want to do, or how many cards I need to get done, things along those lines. But today I'm actually just playing with stencils because I love them. I have a ton of them. They're super inexpensive, and they're just a lot of fun. So here's my geometric shaped stencil. It's lots of squares, little ones, bigger ones. And so I wasn't sure what I wanted to do with this, but I ended up wanting to use my Hero White pigment ink pad. And I'm using a small dauber just because this one, I get some of these at the dollar store or some of them I've gotten off of Amazon. I've even gotten a few off of Timu. So they're not the greatest quality. They're fairly thin. So you really need to kind of stomp on them from the top with your little dauber and try not to move it around too much otherwise it won't be as crisp of a image. It's nice because you can see where the white is on the stencil and I sped that up and cut a bunch out so that because you guys got the picture with that. But then here's the reveal. And it's kind of a nice background piece. There's no focal point. I do have a couple of kind of darker areas than others but we'll fix that when we make it into a card in part two video. So on to our next card, we're going to use some of these layering stencils. And I am still using this plastic piece and really I need to be using a silicone pad because it grabs onto your paper a little bit better. We're using some stamping up stamp pads right now. This is old olive and I'm just gonna, again, this is a thinner pad and because it's got such little detail, it's, it's moving around quite a, quite a bit. And what I don't realize is the paper is moving around a little bit in the background as well. And so this one is probably going to be what I'd call a practice piece. Because <laughs> when I take this off, it really got smeared. So I take away that plastic pad and we are going to use a silicone pad. And my silicone pad, unfortunately, is has a little bit of a sheen to it. So you can see my light above. Bear with me on that. The silicone pad is a lot more sticky, so it holds down my card base a little bit better. So we'll go back through this again and I'll cut a bit of 
this out and I'm speeding this up quite a bit as well, but you guys get the picture. So I just got that old olive all the way through. And then we'll put on the second layering stencil. And I'm just gonna line it up real good so that I have it pretty even on all sides. And then we're gonna use another stamp it up stamp pad. This is a greener color. I think this is garden green. And I'll put that in here as well so you guys can see that. And this is kind of a darker color, so I dab off a little bit, go through here and get all these cute diamonds in here. And this will be another nice background. So, so far, not a lot of focal piece. All of these are mostly backgrounds and you could do a lot of with the backgrounds. Here, I just wanted to show that I'm using a sponge dauber and not one of the ones that are like a brush dauber because those brush pieces can get underneath the stencils and have it where you don't have such a crisp image. So the reveal here, it's pretty. You could put pretty flowers on here. It kind of looks like greenery background, which was what I was hoping for. So onto our next stencil and you're gonna see here, you're gonna be like, what is she doing with their pencil? Well, I want to put some ink on here and I wanna have a general idea of where the shapes are. And so I'm just using a pencil and I've done this a few times with other stencils and with Distress Oxides, which I'm gonna use here. And these are the three colors. When you use Distress Oxide, it actually kind of takes the pencil marks away when you use them. So these pencil marks won't stay and I don't have to actually erase them either because they'll be underneath the ink. So this just helps me like keep the green in where the greenery is. And I'm just, just trying to put some ink in the general area of those shapes so that when we put the stencil back on and we stencil the actual image, it'll be on top of an already correct colored area. And so that was the greenery and I wanted to do that first. And now I'm gonna use the antique linen to create the rest of the background just because I wanted to get those out of the way I could have probably done that first. I was just afraid that the antique linen might take away some of my pencil marks on the greenery and I was afraid I'd not be sure where those went. So I used, I decided to do that one second. And this is just so I have a completely colored background. I love Distress Oxides for blending like this. Again, I am, as you guys all know from my previous videos, I, I'm not a very good blender of ink. I like to just put ink down and kind of let the background do the rest of the work. And so here I'm just putting the ink down for the flower parts. And you can see most of that pencil mark is already gone. And because we're going to put the stencil down, it will cover any of the pencil that's actually left over. All right, so there it is. And we're going to put, try and match the stencil back up. And then I'll stick down the stencil as well. And then I'm using a darker pink this is the picked raspberry distress oxide again and it's just going to put the little outline there in the centers of the flowers and this is card crafting so if i do get some of the pink on some of the green or vice versa it's not the end of the world it's supposed to look just kind of pretty and artsy and i don't really worry about that kind of thing on this i'm using distress oxide this is the citron color it's a two-word color but i know it's citron all right, and so then I wanted to make the flowers kind of 3D, so I'm going to make a few stencils of those flowers so I can cut them out and add them onto the card when we assemble it. And so I just swiped on some of the tattered rose color and then I'm putting the picked raspberry on top. All right, on to the next one. So I've got three more Distress Oxides, Peacock Feathers, Abandoned Coral, and Seedless Preserves. And again, I'm gonna do a background first. And here I'm just gonna put the colors on the paper again. These are three of my favorites from just these Distress Oxides. These three colors are really vibrant and pretty. I like an occasional muted colored card, but I really like these brighter colors from these Distress Oxides. And again, I'm not worried too much about blending or anything like that. I do use some of that post-it labeling tape for my fingers as well, so I'm not getting ink all over my fingers or fingerprints. With the Distress Oxides, you can sometimes see fingerprints. So I just use that kind of to keep my fingers from getting into it. And then we're gonna use this layered stencil set as well. And so first we're gonna use this and I'm gonna spray some water. You can also use baby wipes for this process. I didn't have any at the moment, I had water. The baby wipes would make a more significant look and I'm just making sure I get all the water off before I take them off so that there isn't any muddling going on in here. But it's a fairly muted change 
and then I just had to line them up because I wasn't sure where the second one belonged. And I'm gonna take I'm gonna take out some Stampin' Up inks, and we'll use these just so we have a darker layer over it. And I did let this dry a little bit between, but I'm just gonna put blue on top of the blue and the purple on top of that preserves. And then I'm gonna put this pink color on top of the coral. And here you can see the colors. And that turned out nice too as a good background as well and so this is one of my favorite stencils and I took a big sheet of paper because I'm going to want to use the whole thing and not have to cut it out on a four and a quarter by five and a half sheet of cardstock which is my go-to so I'm using a whole sheet and I'll cut this out later on but this is the tattered rose this is the rose color <laughs> distress oxide and you'll see I'm just gonna get ink all the way in here and again this is another thinner stencil and so I'm just gonna get some ink and in this one we're gonna use two stencils but they don't coordinate they're not layering stencils they don't go together they come from a totally different set with a big stencil like this you can have fun with it and so this is just a random stencil I have I didn't even tape it down, but uh, I'm just putting a little bit of ink, and this is the Amanda and Coral again, and I just wanted it to have a little texture on the flower, and it came out kind of pretty. I really like it, so that was just a kind of last minute. What could I do to make this look a little bit jazzier? And so I'm going to use my Tim Holtz small scissors, and I'm going to fussy cut this out. And I've sped this up quite a bit too. Nobody needs to see my fussy cutting. I don't like to see a lot of the white behind my fussy cutting, so I usually cut it pretty close. And these Tim Holtz scissors are super nice. All right, so this is a five by seven card base, which is not my norm, but I wanted to get as much of this flower as I could on there. And now I'm gonna try and stencil some leaves as well. And I'll pop up that flower but the leaves behind it will be nice. I'm using a little bit of tape because I've learned over time that I can be a little messy, so since I'm gonna be doing two leaves, I decided I better cover up some of the other leaves, or otherwise I'll have some partial images, and that's never fun. And what I did forget to do was to take my <laughs> flower off, so I almost got ink on the flower, but uh, that was really there just to see where I needed to have those leaves. And then I'm going to line this back up and you can see I did get a little bit of green on that flower but I'm going to turn it around anyway and so it might end up being off the end of that card anyway. So I'm going to add another leaf down here in the bottom left corner. I'll line that back up again to see how that looks and every time I line it up I think I'm lining it up a little bit differently but then I decided I'm going to put one more leaf up there in the top right corner I like the way that looks. And before I even tack it down, I decide I'm gonna just cut it off and that way I'll know kind of where it needs to sit. I just kind of keep holding on to it. This this is my, if you guys watched my craft room renovation, you'll know that I am in love with my boxes that I have and so they're all labeled. And so these have my glue dots and my foam dots. And I decided to put one foam dot down so that I could keep it in the correct place and then I'll add a bunch more foam tape to the back of here. So I can pop this rose up a little bit. And these are my sticky scissors. You guys know that I try not to use my nice scissors for all this sticky stuff. And so these are titanium scissors as well, but they everyday scissors. And so they're not fancy, not an, they're not very expensive or anything. And so I just use them whenever I'm gonna be cutting something sticky. There was plenty of other ways I could have done this <laughs> with me sticking one dot down. It actually worked out okay, but probably plenty of other ideas that could have could have worked better. So now I'm going to just add a few finishing touches. I'm using a green pen. This is a metallic pen and I'm just adding in some lines into the leaves. Can't really see it on film but you can see it in person. And then this is my Wink Estella. As you guys know I love a little glitter and because the whites are a little bit different it looks like on here. My card base is from an old, it's an older card base and it must have been a different paper. And so this Wink Estella is just going to make it 
so that you can't even tell because I put it all in the white area and then I also put a little bit in the green area and now you can see those little lines. So make sure you watch part two and we will put all of these background pieces into some beautiful cards. Thanks for hanging with me today as this is a longer video. Thanks for joining me today on this fantastic journey. If you would, please click the like button if you enjoyed this content and also subscribe so you can watch future content. And if you hit the notification bell, you'll also be notified every time I create new content, which is twice weekly. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks so much.